All right, in this video, we're gonna show how to clean the bluefish. This is a nice bluefish for at least for Florida waters that we got. Haven't eaten bluefish in a while, so we're gonna give it a whirl. And the first thing is highly recommend bleeding them. And we did a separate video on that. We basically just cut the main artery right there. That way the blood just gets flushed out of the fish. And this, this meat is gonna be as white as possible from doing that. And so, so for, as far as cleaning, this is a, a traditional clean. Just know that just like most species, the best meat is gonna be this top quadrant, right? Because down here you have the ribs. So what I like to do is I just kind of feel on the head to feel where that bone is, it's right there. And so I'll put the knife right behind it and that's where I'm going in, right? Because I want to get as much of that good thick meat as possible. Instead of going like this, right? I used to always just do this right here and now you lose that whole chunk of meat, that's good meat, right? And when you do it this way, now you're getting the rib cages, which we really don't want. So I highly recommend going in at an angle then coming straight down through. And now we're going to again focus on the top part where we're going to go right along the back and just trace along where you want it. You need to be able to just kind of feel with your knife. You want to feel that blade just barely going over the bones. And this is just going in just real thin, about maybe half an inch. And so just give it, go all the way down. It's kind of a dull knife, so it's not perfect line. If you have a nice, nice brand new knife, it's a whole lot easier. Again, I'm just doing small little cuts, just taking my time, no need to rush. And now is when we, when we get a little bit more careful, right? We lift up the flap, and now we put, angle the knife down, and just follow right along the bones. This is where we're gonna maximize the amount of meat that we get with, with uh, missing as little as possible. And we basically do that until we start feeling the vertebrae. So we've basically gone in all the way down to the middle of the fish. So now at this point, I'm gonna flip it over, Get down here and I, I, try to, I try to just not get the guts, right? The stomach is right down below me. So I just go up a hair, right? I mean, this is the ribs, is probably gonna be getting cut out anyhow. And then I aim right for that fin, right for that fin. I just aim down, so I'm skipping over some of that meat, but now I'm getting back down to where we're gonna get all meat. So now there's gonna be no, no rib bones further south of here. And so now we just go, just like before, right? We just trace an outline of where we want it Take our time, straight down there. Now we can go in and start chipping away at it. And now what I like to do is just punch through, right? I lift up the top, get it down, make sure I got it all. And then I'll poke through. And that way we can, we can just go ahead and just take the full cut there. And now, let me switch it over so you can see better. So now what I like to do is I like to, like to work my way back up towards the, towards the ribs. And so what I'm doing is, again, I'm going over the vertebrae, right? That first line got a, just above the vertebrae. And so now I'm going down on the other side of the vertebrae again so that we don't miss the meat. What I used to do is I used to just run it flat, right? I would run it flat right down the vertebrae. And when you do that, you lose this meat. So I actually did lose a little bit there, but it would have been a lot more than that and it would have been on both sides had I done, had I done it that style. So now we're, we're basically got everything but the rib bones. And so now it's time just to go ahead and just power through. Just power through the ribs. And there, that's a pretty good filet of bluefish. Still a little bit darker than most meats, but as you saw, as you can see, right, there's really hardly any blood on the table because we already bled it. So highly, highly recommend doing that. If you don't bleed your fish, do that for all fish. That way, again, everything is as clean as possible and the meat's as good as possible. So as far as skinning it, one trick to do is, uh, is make sure to have your handle off the table, right? If you have your handle on the table, you're gonna be missing that gap, right? It's a, that's a big gap there. If you have it on the table, you're super flush. So get in there, just get wedged in and then keep it flush and just keep it right down, right down along the table. So these, these fish have some heavy bloodlines, so we're gonna cut that on next, but you can see there, it's, it's a really thick bloodline. That's where that fishy taste comes from. And so again, as far as making this, this meat taste as good as possible, after we skin this puppy, we're gonna go ahead and take out those bloodlines. There we are. So now we have taken the meat, the skin off the meat, we'll throw that out. 
catfish will be my best friend. And so now, again, this bloodline, this is a real thick bloodline. What I like to do is just, I just take it out. And the easiest way to do it is basically just to cut down straight down the middle, almost like treating like a flounder where you have each fillet has two, two sides. Cut through there, I can feel some bones, so I'll cut those out next. Actually, I'll go ahead and cut the bones out now. So right now, I basically went through the, the ribs, and so it's just this very top portion has some bones. I can feel the bones in there. Otherwise, this is all, this is all good meat. And there's a couple bones in there, but so as far as getting the bloodline out, I just get down, get the knife down, and just try to just get all that red out of there. Sometimes the eater just kind of poke through it. And then just, again, this is the stuff that makes the fish taste, taste fishy. And when you take this out, we'll be doing a taste test. We have some flounder, we have mackerel, and a, span, and a, a little uh, mangrove snapper. And so we're gonna do uh, a taste test on it, but that's, that's gonna be some pretty good meat. If you have a little bit on there, that's no big deal. That's good enough. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a baggie and then put it in, in cold, I have cold water down below. I'm gonna go ahead and just get it cold right away. We do not want any of this meat spoiling. And so now that's cold. Now we'll do the same thing over here. Right, I'm feeling for bones. So when I cut through those ribs, got some bones in there and those, most fish have pin bones there as well. And so now I'm just gonna, since I'm in, I might as well just go and skin off all this, all the bloodline. If you wanna go catch a bunch of catfish or even tarpon, if tarpon in the canals, this bloodline, a lot of fish will kill to eat that. So happy catfish. Again, there's a nice solid chunk of meat. Uh, we have a little bit of, I guess I got a little bit too, too thick, too deep right there. You can see it on the, on the meat. So I, I went down a little bit too deep, trying to get as much meat as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and just cut that out. Just kind of spot check things like that. And, uh, and then it's really the same on the reverse. So let's finish off this puppy. Feel one bone in there. All right, so again, the key is just to get, you know, this is the best meat. So I spend most of the time on this top quadrant. Then I cut through, cut through the tail, and then I'm slicing down, right? There's no, there's no meat at all missed. This is a way just to get the most meat. It takes a little bit longer than some other methods, but again, if you, if you scrape, if you get in there and start scraping real fast, you can look down here, look at this gap, you can see the shadow. That's a lot of meat that's being missed because that vertebrae is standing up above both sides. So if you want to max your meat, go do one side, the other side. If you go for speed, zip down and just know that you're gonna you're gonna miss a little bit so anyhow that's it for now i'm just gonna do the same thing on the reverse side if you have any questions or if you have any tricks on cleaning bluefish i don't clean these very often but in most cases you know the same type of species the same method works for, for various species and uh, this is just how i've done it so thanks for watching hope to see you again soon there's something about the water that'll give you peace all by yourself or with your family live so strong in where the lines are dead.